labor may begin so slowly that some women are not sure if it is actually occurring or not. During the first phase of labor, cervical dilation increases from 0 to 3 centimeters, and the resulting contractions are mildly palpable. Many women compare them to menstrual cramps. It is in the second stage of labor, when contractions become stronger and stronger, that most women begin to experience a level of pain for which they want to implement pain control techniques or medications. With every uterine contraction, pain receptors in the uterus are stimulated. Contractions push blood out of the myometrium and into the maternal bloodstream, which causes myometrial hypoxia and pain. The common response to pain is fear, which causes the woman to tighten the large muscles in her shoulders and extremities. This further reduces the oxygenated blood available to the uterine muscle, and contractions become even more uncomfortable as well as less effective. If the mother tightens her abdominal muscles, the uterus is forced upward against them, also causing pain. Other causes of discomfort during labor include cervical stretching and dilation, distension of the lower uterine segment, and pressure on the pelvic nerves, as well as the traction on supporting structures and the stretching of the pelvic floor. While some women are able to maintain control over their pain during labor and delivery without the use of medication, others cannot. Most women describe labor as painful. In fact, many women call their contractions pains. The pain associated with labor is related to normal muscular function, but is still a source of distress for the patient and extremely fatiguing. The amount of muscular function performed by the uterus to push the baby out has been compared to that of a marathon runner's muscles when running. When a laboring mother's muscles are working hard, they may become hypoxic and dehydration may occur that leads to hypovolemia if fluids are not replenished. Therefore, providing hydration through oral fluids or IV supplementation and allowing rest between contractions helps maintain physiologic homeostasis and assists in pain management as well. For many women, non-pharmacologic methods of pain control can be very effective. These methods work to decrease the patient's perception of pain through the use of relaxation techniques. These are most effective when the patient has attended childbirth preparation classes and had the opportunity to learn and practice the techniques with her birth partner prior to the onset of labor. However, even learned in the more stressful environment of active labor, these techniques can be very beneficial. Slow abdominal breathing while focusing on a visual point is commonly used during the second phase of labor. Another technique is for the birth partner to observe for body tensing during contractions and lightly touch the tense area. The mother responds by consciously relaxing that muscle group. Both the act of relaxation and the change of focus away from the contracting uterus assist in control of her pain. Warm water is very relaxing for tense muscles, and the nurse may place the mother in a whirlpool, soak tub, or shower. Many women find this significantly reduces their discomfort. Massaging the mother's neck, shoulders, arms, and back can be very helpful. For some, counterpressure offers significant distraction away from the uterine contractions. In this technique, pressure is exerted on another muscle group with a fist or tennis ball during the contraction. Effleurage, a feather-light massage, can help release tense muscles and can also be performed on the abdomen during contractions. Other distraction techniques, such as watching a funny movie or listening to calming music, are often helpful during the earlier stages of labor, but cease to provide sufficient comfort or distraction as labor increases in intensity.